Hello, I'm Johnny, and today's topic is the long-awaited return of the Sacramento Kings to the playoffs, honouring the Kings Five Tigers with their dazzling offence. Pager Stojakovic, Mike Bibby, Chris Webber, De Aaron Fox, and Demantis Sabonis. Let's start with a little story. Although most basketball fans today support teams like the Warriors and the Lakers, around 2000, many fans in Taiwan actually supported the Kings. Jason, White Chocolate Williams' flashy playing style, combined with Vlade Divac and Chris Webber, made the Kings one of the most entertaining teams in the league at the time. After Mike Bibby joined the Kings, he brought stability to the team, while Peja Stojakovic became a star player in the league. The Kings' five Tigers were undoubtedly a fond memory for many fans. Unfortunately, after losing to the Lakers for three consecutive seasons, the players went their separate ways, including Weber moving to the 76 ERs and Stojakovic joining the Pacers in the 2005-2006 season. The Kings did make the playoffs that season, but little did they know, it would be their last playoff appearance for over a decade. Fast forward to 2023, the last time the Kings made the playoffs was in 2006, so they have been absent from the playoffs for over 16 years. It's not an exaggeration to say that the Kings have been one of the most tragic teams in the league in recent years. What's even more important is that the Kings have had some great players in the past decade, including DeMarcus Cousins' cousins, who not only made the All-Star team, but was also selected to the All-NBA third team for two consecutive seasons. However, Cousins ultimately did not stay with the Kings. In the summer of 2017, the Kings drafted De'Aaron Fox, who is now their core player, marking the beginning of a new era for the team. In the following two drafts, the Kings selected two guards, Tyrese Halliburton and Davian Mitchell. This strategy puzzled many fans since the team did not acquire any frontcourt players, yet they continued to draft backcourt players for development. Last season, the Kings' management heard the fans' voices and traded Halliburton for Pacers' big man, Demantis Sabonis. The trade was heavily criticised by fans as Halliburton was a very stable and promising player. However, as mentioned earlier, the Kings' front court was lacking and with the drafting of Mitchell it was inevitable that one of the three guards would eventually be traded. More importantly, the Kings did not make the playoffs last season and Halliburton's excellent performance with the Pacers made the Kings' fans feel heartbroken, which is understandable. Last off-season, the Kings' management was very proactive in strengthening the team, including acquiring Kevin Herter and Malik Monk as well as drafting forward Keegan Murray. Together with Fox, Sabonis, Harrison Barnes and other players, the Kings roster is not only complete in terms of starting power, but also has a well-rounded bench. Although they may not be on the same level as the Clippers and the Bucks, the completeness of their roster is already better than most teams in the league. What's even more important is that the team has the chance to return to the playoffs after 16 years. Both Fox and Sabonis have been recognised with all-star selections this year. The Kings of the 2000s were known for their exceptional offensive abilities and coincidentally, this season's Kings are also among the highest scoring teams in the league. I believe that if you are a Kings fan, you must be delighted to see the team's performance this season. Now that we've covered the team's story, let's talk about the Kings roster and their next steps. Before we dive into the topic, please don't forget to like our video. Your encouragement is our motivation. Thank you. Also, I'm not feeling well today, so my voice may sound more hoarse than usual. Please bear with me. When discussing the Kings' style of play, we have to talk about Sabonis. Although Fox is the highest scoring player on the team, averaging 25 points per game this season, with a career-high 51% field goal percentage, Sabonis' importance to the team is not less than Fox's. Let's take the Denver Nuggets as an example. Last season, without Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., Nikola Jokic had to play both the organiser and closer roles. But this season, with Murray and Porter Jr. back on the court, Jokic contributes to the team's victories with fewer shot attempts and more assists. Jokic averages 10 assists per game this season, ranking in the top five in the league. However, fans should know that Sabonis is also among the league's top 15, with an average of 7.2 assists per game. Jokingly, they are both point guards disguised as starting centres. In fact, the Warriors' Draymond Green has always been such a player. Additionally, fans should know that Sabonis is currently the league's leading rebounder, and in terms of irreplaceability and per player efficiency rating, Sabonis outperforms Fox. In short, the Kings are Fox's team, which is evident in his clutch performances this season. However, Sabonis is undoubtedly the soul of the team, without question.
Next, let's take a look at Sabonis' importance on the court. As mentioned earlier, Jokic and Green are unique big men in the league who excel at organising plays. We won't go into detail about Green's partnership with the Splash Brothers, as fans are well aware of its powerful impact. However, Green is not an outstanding scorer, which is the main difference between him, Jokic and Sabonis. Jokic often operates from a high post position on the court because of his mid-range and long-range shooting abilities. This forces defenders to be cautious and not sag too far off. For example, in this play against the Celtics, as soon as he crosses half-court, the opponents must keep an eye on him. After a simple pick-and-roll, two players rush to guard Jokic and Aaron Gordon comes in for a beautiful dunk. In another play against the Warriors, Jokic's teammate fakes out the defender and cuts to the basket for an easy two points. These examples showcase Jokic's passing abilities and court vision. Now let's look at Sabonis. Although his teammates cut and hurt his off-ball movement don't create opportunities at first, Monk deceives his defender, cuts to the basket and finishes with a dunk. In this play it's a mismatch and the Celtics have no choice but to send help. Barnes cuts in for another easy dunk. Moreover, having an excellent off-ball player like Kevin Huerta on the Kings roster enables some great cooperation between Sabonis and Huerta. In these two plays against the Bucks and the Pelicans, you can see a hint of the Warriors' style, right? If you think Sabonis is just a passer, you're mistaken. He also has a strong presence in the paint. In this play against the Magic, 25 points, 53 seconds, Sabonis shows beautiful footwork in a one-on-one situation. After watching these plays, fans can see how important Sabonis, who averages 19 points, 12 rebounds and 7 assists per game this season, is on the court. Simply put, he can share the workload of the backcourt players and help his teammates play more efficiently. Moreover, Sabonis was already a two-time All-Star with the Pacers, so I personally don't think there was any issue with the Kings choosing to trade for him. In short, if a team wants to make the playoffs, strengthening the front court is both essential and necessary. Next, let's talk about Fox, whose speed is well known, making his penetration very destructive. However, what impressed me the most this season is that his mid to long range shooting has become more stable. Not only has his shooting percentage increased, but he has also managed to maintain a field goal percentage of over 45%. This is quite impressive. In reality, Fox is not a player who relies heavily on three pointers for scoring. Although he is not as extreme as SGA from the Thunder, who attempts less than three three pointers per game, Fox's average three-point attempts per game this season is still less than five, which is not high. For most of the season, Fox has been using his explosiveness and speed to drive to the basket or initiate a fence after a pick and roll, either cutting into the paint or opting for a mid-range shot. This approach is quite smart considering the presence of Huerta, Monk, Barnes and other players on the perimeter to space the floor. Under these circumstances, driving and mid-range shots are definitely more reasonable choices. When it comes to three-pointers... Fans should know that this season Huerta, Monk, Murray and Barnes collectively attempt over 22 three-pointers per game, contributing more than eight made threes per game. Moreover, each of these four players has a three-point shooting percentage of at least 35%, with Huerta and Murray shooting over 40%. This allows Sabonis and Fox to face less double-teaming and help defence when attacking, making the Kings a well-rounded team. This is also the main reason why the Kings can average over 120 points per game this season. Another important factor is that the Kings are doing an excellent job protecting defensive rebounds, averaging only 9.7 offensive rebounds allowed per game, which ranks in the top 10 in the league. This means that opponents have fewer second chance opportunities while the Kings maintain fast break chances. The difference between the two is significant. The Kings' starting lineup consists of Sabonis, Murray, Barnes, Fox and Herter. Huerta's off-ball ability is excellent, allowing the team to employ various offensive tactics. This type of player is highly sought after by every team, as their movement can easily create defensive gaps, providing more passing opportunities for Fox and Sabonis. Although this season's Rookie of the Year is likely to be Paolo Banchero from the Magic, Murray's 40% three-point shooting has been another key factor in the Kings' impressive performance. Moreover, he is not just a catch-and-shoot player, His catch-and-shoot attempts on the move are becoming increasingly common. His outside shooting prowess, along with Huerta's, is causing significant... Adding to the complication, the bench also features the explosive Malik Monk, who Lakers fans are undoubtedly familiar with. In fact, his 45-point performance against the Clippers this season showcased his scoring prowess. Averaging 13 points per game, Monk ranks fifth on the team, which now boasts six players scoring in double digits, an advantage for the Kings. 
As for Harrison Barnes, a former NBA champion with the Warriors, his defensive skills and on-court experience are crucial for the Kings. It's worth noting that the Kings' core players are all under the age of 27, so having Barnes or even Matthew Della Vadova is essential for a deep playoff run. Additionally, the bench includes Trey Lyles, a player with three-point shooting capabilities, and Chimezi Metu, Terence Davis and Davion Mitchell, which rounds out the Kings' roster quite nicely. The six foot seven Kevin Huerta's versatility to play the small forward position helps prevent the backcourt from becoming too congested. In terms of salary, the team's payroll is only around $100 million for the next season, indicating a healthy salary structure. Barnes's contract will be up, and he's a player the Kings must retain. However, with his defensive abilities and shooting skills, other teams will surely be interested. Lyles is another player the Kings should keep. Overall, the management's off season workload shouldn't be too taxing. The Kings' offensive performance is definitely worth fans' attention. Personally, I see a bit of the Chris Webber and Vlade Divac era in DeMantis Sabonis' passing abilities. Monk also has a hint of the Bobby Jackson bench mob vibe, who once won the Sixth Man of the Year award as a King. The current team's top scorer is De'Aaron Fox from the backcourt, whereas in the early 2000s the Kings' scoring leaders were Webber and Peja Stojakovic from the frontcourt. As long as the team can make it to the playoffs this season, both the organisation and the fans will be thrilled. Moreover, this year's powerful offence pays homage to past Kings legends. I genuinely believe fans should pay more attention to this team. In my opinion, as long as the players stay healthy and are given some time, the Kings have the potential to become one of the league's powerhouses once again. That's all for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. This is Johnny Talk NBA, and I'll see you next time.